Father, we give you all the glory this morning. We are trusting you that what you have done for others, you can do it again. And you will indeed do it for us. And we are trusting your spirit that you are going to bless us again, minister life to everyone. You are going to release hope, help, strength, encouragement from the word to sustain our lives and to grant us victory over every forces of life that is against your purpose. We thank you for the spirit of grace and we thank you for all that you have done today in the course of today's service. And thank you, Lord, for what you will yet do. We'll return all the glory to you this morning. Father, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. This morning, Lord, I ask that you will speak to us. You will touch our lives. You will help us. You will correct us. You will feed us. And you will change us. In the name of Jesus. Let the light of your word begin to dispel every darkness in our lives. Every darkness of the world in the path of everyone here. Let the light of God's word begin to dispel them. Great Holy Spirit, take over. Do what only you can do. And say the things that only you can say. We receive a heart of quick understanding. And we go and obey what you have said. Thank you, Father. Blessed, O Lord, be your holy name. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let's be seated. Good morning, everybody. The Lord is good. And all the time. Let me hear your voice louder. I say the Lord is good. And all the time. I believe you can do better than that. I say the Lord is good. And all the time. You will always experience the goodness of God in your life in Jesus' name. Now, this morning, I'm going to continue in the series that we've started. I think last month we started a series about the name of the Lord. And I tell you, if there is a time that you need to know who the Lord is, and you need to bring him practically to your personal experience, this is the time. The Bible says, they that know the Lord will be strong and they will do exploit. There is a strength that can only come from your knowledge of the Lord. When life circumstances begin to come, it is your knowledge of the Lord that is going to respond. Who you know God to be will always make the difference when you, are making, when you are facing life. If you don't know who God is, you will depend on the God that they describe to you. That may not help you when you are facing life. But when you know who God is and you know what he can do, then it will help you and make all the difference when you are facing life. I'm praying that you will have a personal understanding of who the Lord is. For a few weeks, we continue to look at Psalm 20, verses 7 and 8 in particular. When the Bible says, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we will remember. The factor of remembering the name of the Lord is the factor of trust. It means we will trust the name of the Lord, our God. When they are trusting in chariots, when they are depending upon horses, we will be trusting in the name of the Lord, our God. And uh, we are risen and stand upright. They are falling. I'm praying for you that you will not be part of the people that are falling. Do you know many people will still fall in the last days? Many people will still fall 
but don't be part of the people that will fall. Be part of the people that will rise. Tell somebody, I am rising to rise in life. Say, I am rising to rise in life. That is a reward of you knowing who the Lord is. We got our teaching to a point of knowing God as the Jehovah. And I told you there are different manifestations of the Jehovah God in the Bible. We started with Jehovah Jireh, which is the God of ways, the God of means. And last week, we focused on the reality of divine provision. That divine provision is real. Now, if you don't believe it is real, you are not going to enjoy it. I, your belief is very important to your experience. Are you hearing me now? That, that your experience is attached to your belief. That's why you have to be careful of what you believe. Because what you believe is what you will experience. So if you believe that the, the divine provision is real, that God can make provision available for you to do his will and purpose in this world, then you begin to enjoy it. The God that makes provision available is Jehovah Jireh. He's still alive. Did you hear what I say now? He's still alive. Material provisions are critical in a material world. You cannot survive here without having access to material provision. This is a material world. This is a financial world. You will need material to do things. You will need money to do things. If you are going to fulfill God's purpose for your life, and you are going to do your destiny, you will need material provision. But beloved, there is a God. His name is Jehovah Jireh. He makes provision available for you to do his will and for you to enjoy your life. That God is the God I'm connecting you to by understanding, by knowledge. The provision of the world is limited. The provision of Jehovah Jireh is unlimited. The resources of the world are becoming exhausted. This oil is finishing up. I'm telling you, oil is finishing. Now, in the 70s, our government boasted of we have money. That our problem is not money. And that our problem is how to spend it. So we have a set of wicked, illiterate who don't know what to use money for. That time, in the 70s. And they, both, and they went into a lot of frivolities. Things that has no primary connection with the development of the economy of the country. They wasted it. They stole it. They embezzled it. They destroyed tomorrow and did all kinds of things with money. Because that time they said money was not the problem. But how to spend it. But they didn't know that physical resources are exhaustible. Especially when they are misappropriated. Are you hearing me now? But today, the reality is opposite. We're, in fact, we are in a more trouble, more targeted period now. Because number one, up till today, our government still don't know what to do with money. And the money is not there. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? <laughs> you know, isn't it a serious trouble? It's a serious trouble. There, there, there are two problems. In the 70, we have one problem. The problem of how to spend it. Money is, money is here. I mean, money, oil boom. Boom. The oil boom became oil doom now. Because they squandered it. But today, they still don't know how to spend the money. They still spend the money on useless things. On frivolous things. They still steal it. They still embezzle it. And the money is not even there now. But there is a God. His name is Jehovah Jireh. Are you hearing me now? He's going to take personal action on your life. He's going to make sure you, you live, you prosper, you survive as a child of God. He's the God of abundance. Your own is doable. 
tell somebody, my own is doable. <laughs> Why we continue to pray for Nigeria? But our resources is beyond Nigeria. Because we have a God of divine provision. Let me tell you five things about our God. Number one, Jehovah Jireh is essentially the God of provision. Is essentially the God of provision. That's the first thing I want you to know. You cannot know provision until you know Jehovah Jireh. You will keep struggling if you don't know Jehovah Jireh. You will keep lacking if you don't know Jehovah Jireh. And I don't know how you are going to have a good life in this world to pursue the purpose of God if you don't know Jehovah Jireh. Especially when resources of nations are, are finishing. Not only Nigeria alone, different nations of the world are having problems. The economy is not good. People are hungry. People are dying. Inflation everywhere. Things are scarce. Resources are scarce. But beloved, Jehovah Jireh is the God of provision. I want you to say after me, Jehovah Jireh is my God of provision. When you know him, you will know provision. When you know him, you will know provision. Jehovah Jireh is the God of ways, is the God of means, is the God of divine supply. You cannot be stranded. There will always be a way. Is somebody believing that? There will always be a way. Nothing will stop the day from coming up. Nothing will stop the sun from coming up. Nothing will stop God from having ways. Beloved, nothing can stop you from having ways. I can hear somebody. I hope you are alive here today. Are you really alive? So when I say something, you believe it. I want you to express your, I want you to express your response. And let it be a response of faith. It connects you to the reality of that statement. I'm praying, I'm telling somebody here, that's the fellow who believed Jehovah Jireh, that there will always be a way for you. You will always have ways. You will always have means. You will always have divine supply. Number two, Jehovah Jireh is the God that is committed to meeting every need. And listen to me, every legitimate need. Take note of that. Jehovah Jireh is the God that is committed to meeting every legitimate need. As you move through life, needs are generated. As you pursue the purpose of God, needs will show up. Jehovah Jireh is that God that is committed to meet every legitimate need, especially needs that are generated in your earthly pursuit and fulfillment of his purpose. If you are pursuing the fulfillment of the purpose of God for your life, you have nothing to worry about. Jehovah Jireh will meet every need that is generated in your earthly pursuit and fulfillment of God's purpose. Are you hearing me now? If you get out of his purpose... There is no guarantee that Jehovah Jireh will provide for you. Because Jehovah Jireh provides for people in the line of his purpose. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? As you are pursuing the purpose of God, God does not mind if you enjoy some luxury. He loves his people to enjoy. But his people must enjoy in the line of his purpose. There are no provision for frivolous enjoyment. There are no provision for sinful enjoyment. There are no provision for carnal enjoyment. 
But every enjoyment in the line of God's purpose. Every enjoyment that brings glory to the Father. Every enjoyment that connects people to the blessings of God. There is provision for it. Are you with me now? God does not, God is not against you enjoying. But you must enjoy in the line of his purpose for your life. It must be, it must be a righteous enjoyment. So Jehovah Jireh is committed not just to meet every need, but to meet legitimate need. Somebody say legitimate need. Every legitimate need of your life, especially the ones generated in your pursuit of his purpose, Jehovah Jireh will meet it. Did you hear what I say now? He will meet it. <laughs> you know, somebody said some, some, you know some people were doing they were having ceremony and then the, 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 the people that were invited they drank more beer than the person that was hosting them planned for <laughs> they drank more beer that, you know there are some people that were not invited that will show up are we together so they drank more beer than, the, than what the person hosting them actually planned for. So he had to go and, and borrow some beer, bought it in, on credit, and ensure that everybody drank. They were drinking, he, was, he was, was borrowing. Was borrowing those beer with the heart that by the time they finish, he will pay back. Those people were drinking, he was borrowing more. He was borrowing more. And his debt was increasing. So by the time they finish, the people he expected would give him money. They didn't give him money. They just went. Some that he expected, at least this one should give me this. That one didn't give up to that one. So at the end of the day, he had a lot of beer debt to settle. Are you with me? So he was not talking to somebody that, ah, I'm in trouble that I thought this people would give me money and they did give me money. This is how much I'm still owing to sell to those who are selling beer. And somebody who is just a church goer there said, Jesus will pay it. <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> when I heard, I said, mm -hmm. Jesus does not pay for beer. Jehovah Jireh doesn't have anything to do with that because he's against his purpose. It's against his will. Are you hearing me? When you have a legitimate need, a need that is generated in your pursuit of obedience, in your pursuit of righteous, legitimate need that is generated, Jehovah Jireh is committed to meeting it. Is somebody hearing me now? Is somebody hearing me now? Jehovah is committed to meeting him. He will meet every need. He will meet every need. Number three, Jehovah Jireh is the God that makes provision available before the need arises. Jehovah Jireh is the God that makes provision available before the need arises. I hope somebody is following Jehovah Jireh now. He makes provision available before the need arises. Your need cannot catch him unawares. That's how organized Jehovah Jireh is. That's how faithful Jehovah Jireh is. That's how powerful Jehovah Jireh is. Before your need arises, he makes the provision available. That is Jehovah Jireh. He has the provision before you know the need. He has the provision before you meet the need. That is a critical truth about Jehovah Jireh. Number four, the fundamental truth about this Jehovah Jireh is that he has not changed. Tell somebody he has not changed and he cannot change. Talk to me. I say, tell somebody he has not changed. 
it cannot change. The Bible said in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, I am the Lord, I change it not. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, the Bible said this Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever he did for Abraham on the Mount of Moriah, by providing a substitute ram for the sacrifice, he will do for you. You didn't hear what I said. I said, he will do for you. you know, the house of God is a place where you talk. Oh. If you can't talk, you, you will have problems. Oh. I'm telling you. Christianity is a speaking faith. A faith that is not spoken out is a dead faith. So don't be tired of responding. Is somebody hearing me now? I said what he did for Abraham on the Mount of Moriah that it did not allow him to sacrifice his only son Isaac. It will do for you. Because he has not changed. It's the same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. What he did for the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years, he carried their body. Day to day eating. Day to day clothing. The Bible said their, their cloth was never torn. Their shoes were there. They were eating food of the angels in the wilderness. It will do for you today. No matter the scarcity of nations, there is no scarcity in God. When others are suffering because they do not know their God, you that you know Jehovah Jireh, you will not suffer. In the name of Jesus, the Israelite did not borrow in the wilderness for 40 years. Henceforth, you will no longer borrow to eat. You will no longer borrow to wear clothes. You will no longer borrow to meet your daily needs. In the name of Jesus. Nobody will go hungry again from today. Before the need arises, Jehovah Jireh will respond. What he did for the people of Samaria. When they were besieged by the Syrian army. When they were killing their children and everywhere was dry. God opened up heavens for them. According to the word of the Lord, God will do for you today. In the name of Jesus. He can do it today. He can do it tomorrow. He can do it every time. And he will truly do it in your life. Number five, Jehovah Jireh is the God that specializes in performing financial and material miracles for his people. He specializes in performing financial and material miracles for his people. That's Jehovah Jireh. Somebody say financial and material miracles. Somebody say financial and material miracles. Somebody say financial and material miracles. So that's what I'm dealing with today. Before we pray, Jehovah Jireh, the God of financial and material miracles. That's my focus today. Jehovah Jireh, the God of financial and material miracles. Your material need was coming to an end today. Your financial needs are coming to an end today. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, Jehovah Jireh performs financial and material miracle for his people on two platforms. One, on the platform of his mercy. And two, on the platform of his faithfulness. Not necessarily as a reward for their merit. Not necessarily that the people merit it. Not necessarily as a reward for human merit. 
But Jehovah Jireh, he performs financial and material miracles for his people on the platform of his mercy. On the platform of his faithfulness. Because he's a merciful God. And I pray over you this morning. In this season, you will enjoy the mercy of the Lord. In your finances. In your material needs. You will enjoy the mercy of the Lord. When they say there is casting down, you will say there is lifting up. I didn't hear your voice. So. Don't let the devil disconnect you from this prophetic pronouncement. Is that okay? It's a serious sickness if you are in church and you can't respond. It's, it, that's one way of the devil trying to disconnect you from God's provision. You won't come in vain. I say you will not come in vain. I say you will not come in vain. Church is not a place of relaxation. It's a place of distribution. Distribution of blessing. Distribution of miracles. And God works with his word. You, when you don't see the word of God, you can't see the hand of God. So when you are not responding to the word of God, you are rejecting the hand of God. God works through his word. I'm praying for you today that you will begin to enjoy the mercy of God in your finances. In your every material requirement. In the name of Jesus. God gives you financial miracle. Material miracle. Because of his mercy. Not necessarily because you merit it. I don't think the children of Israel merited it when he was sustaining them in the wilderness for 40 years. How many of you agree with me that many times they mess up? Yes or no? They mess up, but God continues because he's a God of mercy. Are you hearing me now? And he gives financial and material miracle for his people also on the platform of his faithfulness. The God we serve is a faithful God. Somebody say he's a faithful God. He will see to it that he does not deny his faithfulness. Somebody is stepping into a new experience of God's faithfulness. If you are the fellow, say a big guy, amen. You will enjoy the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God will make the difference in your financial life will make the difference in every requirement you need materially. You will not be stranded in the name of Jesus. Let me say this, beloved. Financial and material miracles, they are not magic. They are not magical. They are not magical. Because some people believe God is a magical God. No. God is not a magical God. He's a miraculous God. There is difference between magic and miracle. God does not perform magic. God performs miracles. And I will tell you a few things before we pray. Financial and material miracles are not magical. If they are not magical, what are they? They are the divine imposition of the supernatural on the natural. The divine imposition of the supernatural on the natural. The divine imposition of the supernatural on the natural. Are you hearing me now? How many of you remember when the children of Israel were thirsty in the wilderness and they needed water? When they got to Mara, they tasted the water. What happened to the water? It was bitter. That was why they call it Mara. They couldn't drink it. And God spoke to Moses. Get a leaf. Pluck it. And throw it into the water. And then draw it out. And the water became sweet. That is a supernatural imposition. Of the supernatural. On the natural. By the power of God. Are you with me now? How did water came from the rock? It is a an imposition of the supernatural on the natural. 
It is not magic. God's power makes that available. How did manna come from heaven? Every day. That is God's power taking over the natural. Imposing the supernatural on the natural. And you know God can do the same for you today. You will begin to see God imposing the supernatural on the natural in your life. In the name of Jesus. How will that happen? For you. In the area of financial and material miracles. As performed by the Jehovah Jireh. There are 12 ways. But I will tell you 6 today. And next week we will continue with the remaining 6. There are 12 forms. That Jehovah Jireh can perform financial and material miracle for his people. Jehovah Jireh make financial and material miracles happen for a child of God in 12 different forms. Because when we are talking of provision, it is not reasonable for you to think that Naira will fall from heaven. They don't spend Naira in heaven. Is somebody hearing me now? They don't, there is a, Naira is printed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. They don't have CBN office in heaven. Because your theology must be correct for your provision to be accurate. Because most people today, they don't have the knowledge of how God operates. So their faith is not properly placed. In fact, some children of God are the, among the people that do the most stupid thing today. When it comes to using their faith for divine provision. Somebody stays in his house, sleeps and wake up, sleeps and wake up, sleeps and wake up, and he says, Jehovah Jireh is my God. That person will just die in poverty. Nothing will happen. We don't preach a mystical gospel. The Bible is not a mystical book. It's a practical book. Are you hearing me now? It's a what? A practical book. And we need understanding so that our faith can properly function. Jehovah, how many of you believe Jehovah Jireh can give you financial and material miracles? You believe it? Let me see your hand. You believe it? Let me see your hand. That's where we are. That is where to start. To. You believe it? That is your qualification for the experience. Okay? And I decree over you today that it will make material and financial miracle work in your life. In a peculiar way, beginning from now, you will begin to enjoy and experience perpetual financial and material miracles. In the name of Jesus. But how does it do it? It does it in 12 forms. I share six with you today. As I hope you are sensitive. Number one, in the form of debt cancellation. In the form of debt cancellation. Jehovah Jireh can make financial and material miracle available unto you in the form of debt cancellation. Beloved, Jehovah Jireh performed the miracle of debt cancellation. For the widow of one of the sons of the prophet. As we read it in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7. Write it down when you get home you read it. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7. The wife of one of the student prophets. That, that died. Ran to Elisha. And said my lord. Your, my husband, your servant, loved the Lord. He died in active service of the Lord. And he left debt. And we have two children. And those we owe are here to take our children. You know, that's not a good thing. You know, that's not a palatable experience. 
You know that's a very terrible season in the life of that woman. She's about to lose her two children. How many of you know that it is enough for, for death to take away her husband? And that it will be devastating for death to take away her two children? How many of you understand what I'm saying now? Do you know it is enough for death? D-E-A-T-H. Iku to take away her husband. Do you know it will be very devastating for debt, D-E-B-T now, to take away her two sons? You know when the devil is fighting a man or a woman, he fights to the finish. The devil does not hit you once and go back. He hits you successively. If you allow it. So death has come and death has come had done its worst. Taking the head of the family. Probably they were sleeping that time. Probably they were not praying. We don't know. But death came again. The creditors came. They said, if you can't pay, really. you know some creditors have no mercy. Are you with me now? They will sell the house when the person living in the house is still there. They will bring military men to come and, uh, to come and uh, I mean, and send the person away. You know, when it comes to death, there is no mercy as far as the system of the world is concerned. So she ran to the man of God. Running to the man of God means she ran to God. Are you hearing me now? And she said, I don't know what to do. And the man of God did not give him money. Don't try, don't, don't, don't look for people bailing you out. When are you going to test the reality of God? When are you going to personally experience the power of God? The normal human approach will have been the pastor will go inside and say, how much is the debt? His SI is 500,000 naira. And the pastor will go and bring one million. I say, okay, collect. Ah! So, now, your, the faith of that woman will never grow. She will never, we know God in the real problems of life. Did you hear what I say? Don't let anybody stop you from knowing God personally. There is a reward for people that know their God. The Bible says, they shall be strong. And they shall do what? Exploit. So the prophet Elisha was not looking for a, a, an easy bailout for the woman. He wanted to develop the woman. He wanted to connect the woman to the God of heaven. The Jehovah Jireh. He said to the woman, what do you have in the house? Beloved, does that not look like a foolish question? Does that not look like a man of God that wants to make jest of you? Answer me. If it is today, he will say, Pastor, I, I, I hope you can hear what I say. If I have anything at all, will I come here? Because it looks to me as a very foolish question. He said, what do you have in the house? The woman said, well, I don't have anything. But there is a little oil in the bottle. Let me tell you, there is something in your house. There is a miracle in your house. From today, God will open your eyes to see that miracle. Why must you die in the midst of plenty? What God will use to connect you to provision is in your house. May, may God open your eyes to see those things. You know the story? He said, okay, that little oil, no problem. Go borrow vessels. Borrow, not a few. Again, another foolish instruction. As far as human being is concerned. Esa, what, what do you mean? It will go and, what is a vessel going to do with death? The ways of God are not the ways of man. God knows what he will do. You know why? His provision is waiting before your need arises. So he is organized. Your need cannot destabilize him. God knew what to do. So he said, borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. Borrow not a few. The woman will fight against disobedience. That's the reason why many people are poor. They are full of disobedience. The woman will fight against despise and mockery of men. People will mock her. I'm very sure that when the creditors came for the children, they would have created a scene. The people, the neighbor, the neighbor would have known what is happening. Are you with me now? 
And you know words will be flying. Tongues will be wagging. You see your friend? <laughs> it's, it's because we are there today. They would have taken the children today. But those people said they are coming back next week. You see your friend? Were you there? Oh, you were not there. Ah, we were the one that uh, rescued the children from there. Otherwise, they would have taken it. We told them, church, 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 that they used to go. Then we told them, tongues were wagging. And then, to put insult on injury, the woman was going from house to house. Because even the vessel she didn't have, she had to borrow. She didn't have. So she would go to this one and say, can I have some vessel? I said, ah, no, he says, yeah, all right, Coco, the problem, you buy, go see problem, egg back, Coco. Are you here me now? Oh, can I have some vessel? And I'm sure news will fly. <laughs> if it is today, the day of Facebook, some people will go and film the woman and put it on Facebook and say, you see, stupid woman, hey, 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 seven days is coming. <laughs> when they we will not come out to you this time around. Instead, for you to know what to do, you are following some foolish prophet that tell you to go and get that vessel. Let me tell you, God is a wise God. He knows what he's doing. Because he's Jehovah Jireh. To cut the long story short, she gather all the vessels. The level of divine provision is a function of our obedience. If she, if she use vessels to fill the whole nation, God will fill it. If she borrow a little, God will fill it. So it's not God that determines how much of provision she can enjoy. It's our obedience that determines how much of provision she can enjoy. And she, she locked the door. And she called, she called her, her, her two sons. I begin to bring the vessel. One after the other. And then she begin to pour. She begin to pour. She begin to pour. That's the supernatural factor. It's not a magic. She has a, she has a role. She played her role well. God never disappoints her. When you play your role well, Jehovah Jireh will show up for you. Are you hearing me now? When you play your role well, Jehovah Jireh will never fail. He is not known to fail. He will never fail. You must play your part well. That's why miracle is not magic. And then she started pouring it. Started pouring it. Pouring it. Pouring it. When she said, I'll bring another one. The two children said, Mommy, it's finished. And then the oil stopped. The things of God will stop. It does not finish. Are you hearing me now? It does not finish. And then she ran back to the man of God. All my house full of uh, oil now. Well, when I see Elisha or the widow, I will ask her. It must have been that oil is very expensive at that time. And it must have been that oil is very scarce at that time. We didn't see it in the Bible. But I suspect. Are you hearing me now? That oil was like a gold that time. And this is a woman that has plenty of it. And she went back to the man of God. And that one said, go and sell it. How many of you see that miracle? Now, did the woman sit down in the house? And expected a ceiling to just burst open. And oil begin to flow. Or money begin to come down. Was that how it happened? Huh? Go and sell it. She had to sell it. And she was selling it. And God will bring the buyers. Because God will never fail in his own function. Check it from the beginning. God has always never failed. As long as the woman didn't fail. God does not fail. Are you hearing me now? That's Bible. So if you see a pastor that is telling you, God will just rain down Naira. That person is connecting you to a demonic operation. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? If you see a pastor that just said, money will just appear in your Bible. That man is connecting you to a demonic operation. God doesn't do such stupid things. God doesn't do magic. God's miracles are practical. Consistent on your obedience and faithfulness. So the woman had to sell this. In selling it, she got money. And then she paid all her debt. The Bible says she had a lot to eat after she had settled her debt. Uh, put your two hands on your head. Somebody will enjoy the miracle of cancellation.
somebody will enjoy the miracle of death cancellation. That's how God canceled that debt. God multiplied her little oil. I pray over you today, the little you have will be divinely multiplied. She had enough to sell and she had enough to clear the debt. I stand upon the platform of the anointing this afternoon. I declare the yoke of death broken in your life. Everyone here that the chain of debt is on your neck. Today, I declare it broken. In the name of Jesus, the demon of death is sent back to hell. The demon of death is sent back to hell. Let the body of death be broken out of your life. In the name of Jesus, the same God that canceled the death of that woman will rise for you. It will open your eyes to what you will do. It will show you the miracle in your house. And you will not fail. You will not disappoint. You will not take divine instruction as a foolish thing. In the name of Jesus. Every passion to incur debt, I take authority over it. Every passion to incur debt. Oh man, shall we miss some, 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 they don't find peace because they will not be able to meet up. And so the debt will be compounding and compounding and compounding. The debt will be compounding and compounding. No, this one. Now, if there is anybody here today under that cage, I command you, be delivered. The demon of greed, I take authority over it in your life. Sometimes we need wisdom. It is wisdom, lack of wisdom will make you go into more debt. Lack of wisdom. Especially when you, when you, when you get debt for, for, for consumable. Ah, I take authority over that crazy spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If there is anyone that is a match in that cycle, that demonic cycle, the power of God will deliver you today. In the name of Jesus. It is an insult for them to now be, to now be phoning all the contacts in your phone and say your friends, so, 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 and so, collected, collected this, collected. You know that's what they do. The spirit of death is the spirit of embarrassment. It's the spirit of shame. The spirit I want to put you to shame. I take authority over that spirit today. Ontoni atue. The wisdom to manage your life and manage divine provision, may you begin to have it today. Amen. You will not jump your season. Amen. You'll be contented with divine provision. Amen. You will not put rope on your neck and hang yourself. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Rise up on your feet. So the first way, God, Jehovah Jireh, Perform financial and material miracle for his people is in the form of debt cancellation. God can cancel your debt. Yes, he can write it off. Can write it off. Number two, in the form of supernatural release of your money or materials tied down by the enemy. When Jehovah Jireh wants to make financial and material available for you, he will release the money or material that is yours. That is tied down by the enemy. He will talk to those people who owe you money. To begin to pay you. That until they pay, you will not need to go and be asking them. They will be the one that will be eager to pay. That's the factor of Jehovah Jireh. Are you hearing me now? Wherever your money and material is tied down. Today, I command a divine release. 
wherever your money is tied down. Wherever your material is tied down. Those who are owing you things. Are you hearing me now? So it's not about those who are owing you things. They will begin to remember you. Did you hear what I said? Now, me, I'm giving you prayer points because I pray that regularly. That everyone owing me things, let the hand of God come upon them. Let them begin to pay what they owe. Are you with me now? Paul, Paul prayed. He said, Paul said in the Bible, he said, if we have sold spiritual things to you, is it a big deal for you to sow back physical things to us? Now, if I've done my job as a pastor, are you hearing me now? And I've done my job as a pastor. Is it a big deal for you to do your job as a good member? I'm asking you. I'm giving you my own, my own understanding. So there are people owing you things. Life will begin to come easy for them. From now on. That what they are owing, they will begin to deliver it. Oh, how many of you believe this is a possibility? That is the ways of Jehovah Jireh. Those who are owing you things. Those who, that your things are with them. Wherever your money or material is tied down. You know there are money required for this ministry. Now, I, regularly I call it forth wherever it is tied down. You can be in Nigeria and the money meant for you is in Australia. Do you know there are no distance in the spirit? Do you know you can call it forth? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Is there anybody here who will begin to call it forth from today? Call forth your money. Wherever your money is. You know, you are selling things. Do you know your customers can be global? How many of you understand what I'm saying now? Your customer can be what? Can be global. Somebody can place an order from America looking for what you are selling. Somebody can place order from Brazil because of what you are selling. What does, it, what does that mean? It means your money is in America. Your money is in Brazil. We are not doing witchcraft operation here. I'm telling you what is possible, what is practicable, what Jehovah Jireh can do. It can bring your cost beyond your location. Do you hear me what I'm saying now? God can supernaturally widen your customer base. That they will begin to come from different places. Making the order. Making the order. Making the order. Making the order. And the turnover will be supernatural. Somebody is getting that experience from now on. In the name of Jesus. If you don't know what to do. Before this week ends. God will show you what to do. And everything you lay your hands upon shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. God in manifesting as Jehovah Jireh. Can cause your money. Or every other thing required for your success. To be released to you. Every resources. And finances. Tied down by the enemy. I decree it shall be released in this season. In the name of Jesus. How many of you remember the story when Jesus said they should go into the village that is opposite them and that they will find a cult that was tied down there. And he told them to untie the cult. Are you, are, are you following me now? And that they should bring it. That anybody that asks them, he should, they should tell them that the Lord has need of it. They, that's a picture of somebody's good, somebody's money, somebody's material tied down somewhere. Where it's a demonic assault. Every demonic assault that make your thing, your money, your material to be tied down anywhere. I take authority over that assault today. Yeah. That yoke is broken. 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 Yeah. Everything that is yours will come to you. Yeah. From now on. Some people will begin to experience that that miracle from now on. Are you part of them? That your things will begin to come to you. 
your money will begin to come to you. Your materials will begin to come to you in the name of Jesus. Number three, Jehovah Jireh can make material and financial miracle to happen for you in the form of supernatural supply. Somebody says supernatural supply. Somebody says supernatural supply. That's how Jehovah Jireh works in your life. Oh, beloved, I have experienced supernatural supply. And I'm experiencing supernatural supply. And I'm looking for more. So I know what it means. Somebody says supernatural supply. And how many of you want to experience it? That God can supply your needs. In the Bible, there are three critical examples of supernatural supply that I will quickly mention. The first one, Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 7. Write it down. I don't have the time. You read it when you get back home. Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 7. Are you hearing me now? Jesus preached using the boat of Peter. And then when he finished preaching, he told Peter, let down your net for a catch. Peter came with complaint. Master, throughout the night, we, we walk. We use power. We use experience. We use expertise. We didn't get anything. But because you said it, oh, hello, somebody. That is, if it's another person that said it, I won't, I won't worry myself. Oh, because we have come to the end of ourselves. We have used everything we know to use. You didn't get anything. But at thy word, I will let down the net. He let down that net. The power of God began to drive all the fishes in that ocean. And say, get into the net of Peter. Get into the net of Peter. Your net will catch some big fish very soon. Hey! 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 And when I be a jala like me. The hand of God began to drive all the fishes and say, where are you? Get it. That's not magical. That's miraculous. That's miraculous. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? And the Bible says their nets were breaking. Have you, did, have you heard of boat sinking miracles? Net breaking miracles? Ah, somebody is about to experience it. That what you are looking for desperately will now come to you in abundance. What is not sufficient will now be more than enough for you. In the name of Jesus. They had to beckon to their friends to come and help them. That is supernatural supply. Somebody says supernatural supply. Is it too big for you to understand that God can do it and that he will still do it even today? The second one, Matthew chapter 17. Verse 24 to 27. Matthew 17. Verse 24 to 27. They came to Jesus. They said, ah, why don't you pay tax? And then, I don't want to go into the nitty gritty of their discussion. Jesus told Peter. So that they won't say we are lawbreakers. Go to the sea. Cast down your net. The first fish you bring. Somebody said the first fish. So if there is a first fish, it means there is a second fish. It means there is a third fish. It means there is a... You know, when you read the Bible with understanding, it means a lot. So Jesus said the first fish. So it wasn't only one fish that Peter caught. But the issue is that the first one open his mouth. You will see the money. It will be enough to pay tax for you and for me. The God that put money in the mouth of the fish, that God is still alive. Oh, did you hear what I say now? I say that God is still alive. That is the God that, the, that make the provision available before the need arises. The, the coin was in the mouth of that fish. But Peter had to go to the sea. To do what? To catch it. And he caught it. The first one. And then he opened his mouth and paid. I pray for you. That, that miracle is coming your way. That miracle is coming your way. That miracle is coming your way. Supernatural supply. 
Somebody says supernatural supply. The third example is in First King chapter 17. First King chapter 17 from verse 1 to 6. How many of you will read all these places I'm mentioning? Amen. I hope you are going to read it. Commit yourself this week to read all, all those references. They will sustain your faith in the word of God. First King chapter 17, verse 1 to 6. It was Elijah that said by the word of the Lord, there shall be no rain, there shall be no dew for, for, for until after according to my word. And for three and a half years, there was no rain. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So there was famine. And God commanded Elijah, go to River Kerich. There, sit down. And then he got there, he sat down there. He was drinking from the water of that river. And then God made ravens to bring food for him. They give him food in the morning. They bring another one in the evening. They bring him food in the morning. They bring another one in the evening. You know the action of the raven is against their nature. The raven is a very stingy belt. They don't give things. They take things. But this time around, God used the ravens to bring food to Elijah in the morning and in the evening. In the morning and in the evening. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? In the morning and in the evening. That's supernatural supply. Are you hearing me now? Oh, you are going to enjoy that miracle. There are still ravens today. Did you hear what I say? That they may not come in the form of bed. There are ravens in form of human beings. Very stingy people. But God will touch them. They will deliver what is in their hand to you. Oh yes, at the instance of God's mandate. God can use a stingy man to help you. That's what I'm saying. God can use a stingy woman to help you. That people will say, eh? Is this one so that did it? Ah! He doesn't bring out money. Not when Jehovah Jireh wants to bless you. Are you with me now? That is supernatural supply. Number four. How does Jehovah Jireh make financial and material miracles available for you? In the form of men coming under divine mandate to do things for you. In the form of men and women coming under divine mandate to do things for you. That's another way that Jehovah Jireh can perform financial and material miracles. Men can come under divine mandate. Now, if you are the one asking people, you will soon be put to shame. They will soon label you a beggar. When you go all around, uh, can I get this? Can I get that? Can I? Very soon, people will be dodging you, running away from you. And uh, That's not God. Are you hearing me now? That is greed. That's not God. When you are, when you, when you are, when you are collecting people's things, uh, can you give me? Can you give me? Can you give me? Can you give me? So they see you as a beggar. In fact, I used to know some brothers. They, 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 we, we just started hearing about the subject of faith that time. And they will come to somebody's house. And they will see somebody's shoe and say, I claim it by faith. I claim this by faith. I nearly slapped one of them one day. When they came, you, came, you claim what by faith? Who told you that me, I don't have faith? <laughs> you claim my, my shoe by faith. How many shoes did I have? That you are claiming by faith. I said, go and see that God has not spoken to me. God has not spoken. In fact, somebody came to me one day. He said, God told, God told him that I should do this. I said, hey, tell God to tell me. God has not spoken to me. Said, God told you, Abi. And he said, yes. And wait, let God tell me. People have different ways. They, they want to steal things. They want to raid you. Are you hearing me, what I'm saying now? You know, yesterday we finished morning shower. And then we were still in the church. Mommy told me that one man just came in white, white uh, overall. And he said he's a prophet. And then mommy went to, to him. 
he said he want to see the pastor. And mommy went to him. I said, oh, oh, what, what? I hope that's what he said. Mm, I want to see the pastor. And mommy said, can you let me? What, what do you really want to? He said, no, 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 it's not you. I, uh, it's not you. I told mommy, I said, it's because you, you don't qualify. <laughs> <laughs> in his in his eyes, you know, you you pastor, I want the prophet in sorrow, and you were kill and you kill and she. I said, and then mommy sent pastor. Is it pastor Ty or pastor Toba? And then at the end of the day, what does he want to get? He, he wanted to raid us. Are you hearing me? Those are the people that make people to ridicule men of God. Moving from office to office. Are you here? As he even pray for himself. And they go there. There are many God says that God didn't say that it is hunger that says it. Some of you are teachers, know what I'm talking about. They move from one school to another school to another school to another school. To another school, to another school. Say we are prayer contract. There are no prayer contractors. It is hunger that is contracting them. Some people should go and do work. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But don't let people come and raid you. Are you hearing me now? Don't let people come and raid you. They just come and say, hey, hey. And they, they are using psychology for you. Using psychology for you. And this is you. Your son is in America. And they, um, it's like, what I'm here, it's like you have somebody in America. And then when they see your girls, they know that you have to say, hey. And then they begin to talk about that one. Ah, along so quick cash shake in come back book. We need book a belong back. Get him off. Are you hearing me now? One man said, he said, those of us that you are teach, those of you that you are teacher. Hmm. He said, hunger will finish you. He said he used to be a teacher. But nothing more body told him when he changed his calling. When he changed his calling, I said, where, where did you change your calling to? He said, if you teach, 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 he will not bring out money from them. He will not bring out money from them. But he said, I became a prophet. Well, he says, so when I give them one vision, it will bring out money. Because they want the one person who I do. <laughs> Praise God. He said he went to one principal. And then he sized her up. And got and guessed that he has uh, a child in, uh, uh, in America. And then he began to size her up. And then he began to give prophecy about the child in America. He said, you know what? Before I left there, I collected one bag of rice. Are you hearing me now? Take Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You are not a beggar. Oh, tell somebody well, I'm not a beggar. I'm not a beggar. Are you hearing me now? I'm not a what? A beggar. I'm not a beggar. The God that called me will feed me. The God that created you will feed you. You are not going to be a beggar. You are not going to beg anybody. God will open the heavens for you. But you know what God will do. Sometimes God will make men to come under the divine mandate to do things for you. How many of you understand what I'm saying now? God can make men and women to come under divine mandate to do things for you. I have seen people Without asking them, God ministered to them. I've done things for me. Very, very mighty things. I have seen that happen regularly. On a platform of honor. Without begging, without saying anything. They were eager to do things for me. Even more than I think I am ready to even receive. That is God. Did you hear me now? God can talk to people to do things for you. How many of you know you can have that miracle in your life? That God can make men and women to come under the mandate to do things for you. In 1 Kings chapter 17, from verse 7 to 9, 1 Kings chapter 17, from verse 7 to 9, when the river where Elijah sat down, when the river got dried up because of the intensity of the famine, where will Elijah get water? And God spoke to him, rise up and go to Sarifat. There is a widow there. I have commanded her 
to what? To feed you. How many of you have read that place before? I, since you have been reading the Bible, did they record where they wrote that God called the woman? Oh yeah, woman come. Elijah is coming. Make sure you feed. No, but God said, I have what? I have commanded her. Do you know God doesn't have to talk before somebody can come under his mandate? And if God will command somebody to feed Elijah, should it be a widow who is, who is very poor, who is speaking the last, who is speaking sticks so that she can cook the last food? Are you with me now? But that is the person that God decided to use. If the woman was a rich woman, we would not see the factor of God. But the woman was poor. But God used her. So when Elijah came there, he saw her picking sticks and then he told the woman, give me water. And the woman, the woman thought, well, water is not a problem. And she was going to take water. Elijah said, bring me food too. Hello. hello. <laughs> May you pass the test of God. May you pass the test of God. God was testing that woman, not for the sake of Elijah, but for the sake of that woman. Did you hear me now? God can never be in need. It is man that is in need. So when God is asking you to give him something, it is never for the sake of God. It is for your own sake. Are you hearing me now? So the woman said, Sir, if it is food, oh, there will be a little problem oh, because I am just picking sticks so that I can cook the last meal in my house. But God saw the disposition of that woman. The woman was ready to do what Elijah said. And Elijah said, Thus said the Lord. The word of God is coming in your direction. The word of God is coming in your direction. Thus said the Lord. The pot will not be empty. The oil will not finish. Until rain fall. And then she went and did it. So every day. That is. They were just eating. They were just what? Eating. They were just 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 eating. Men will come on that Monday to help you. Your life is about to change for the best today. Hello, me, you know what? Lati joto ti daye, awo yensha man kori ra yensha ni. Bi kan di te mwen. Bi kan ban kan ini e. Bi kan ke gen e kan sopa pa po. Kan fi ya jen. But your story is changing from now on. Men will begin to gather together to help you. Did you hear what I just said? Your story is changing today. All those who have gathered together to take what belongs to you, to subject you to punishment, the power of God will come upon their life. That because of you, men will begin to gather to help you. It is not because you are a beggar. It is because they are coming under a divine mandate. Are you hearing me now? You are not the one that will talk to them. But God will speak to them. And say, do so and so. Do so, so, so and so for so and so. In the name of Jesus. Even the people that do not like you naturally. They will come under the mandate of heaven to begin to help you. Oh, tell somebody your help is coming. Somebody tell somebody help is here. Say help is here. Say help is here. Say help is here. Everybody that God wants to use for you, from now they will receive divine command. They will begin to receive divine command. Their ears will be open to what God wants them to do. In the name of Jesus. You know, it is not witchcraft. Because there is nobody that come under divine mandate and that fulfill the mandate that God does not bless. Is somebody hearing me now? In Luke chapter 8 verse 1 to 3, we saw women, women of substance, 
popular women, social women, women of means in their day, gathered together, were supporting the ministry of Jesus Christ from their means. That's what the Bible says. Go and read Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. Are you hearing me now? There are no super ministry that money came from heaven for them. No. It is men and women in different places that God will touch and say, do this for this. Do this for this. Our beloved, Abundant Grace Assembly is stepping into that season now. Amen. Abundant Grace Ministries International is stepping into that season. Amen. Anointed supporters. Amen. Anointed helpers. Amen. Anointed sponsors. Amen. Beginning from inside this house and outside this house, and in the nations of the world. They are rising with their substance. And delivering it for us to preach the gospel. I can hear your amen. amen. You will start crossing path with your helpers. Amen. You will start crossing path with your helpers. Amen. No more hotters. No more haters. Haters and hotters. Haters and hotters. Haters and hotters. But today, it shall be help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. I say help us. I say help us. 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 Nobody is too big for help. I'm telling you, everybody need help. Everybody need help. I'm telling you. Is everything you will need for life and destiny. You cannot alone provide it. Some people will have to help you. But I'm praying for you today. God will raise helpers for you. Amen. Even in the place where you do not even expect. Even in the place where you don't know anybody. Helper will rise for you. Amen. In this season. Your haters will become your helpers. Amen. Your haters will become your helpers. Did you hear what I say? Tell your mom, deal with Luji over Jiri. I eat the juton. Only like by down, only lie, lie, must up a lie, lie, because you can't let me match. Like by Jack for lie, lie, like Tolom Baffin on the West or Wango. Why Jackie Bella got a giddy co dinner? Are you hearing me now? I have seen that happen. That haters, serious haters, now begin to change and they become helpers. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? For me, I don't care if God choose to use my haters to help me, so be it. You do hear what I say? If God has chosen to use my enemy to bless me, so be it. Are you hearing me now? I'm praying for you that you begin to cross path with your helpers. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number five. I have one more to go. How can, how does Jehovah Jireh perform financial and material miracle? Sometimes in the form of supernatural release of favor. Favor. Supernatural release of what? Of favor. Somebody say favor. I say somebody say favor. That's another form. Of Jehovah Jireh performing miracles for you. Materially and financially. Supernatural release of favor. Beloved, Nehemiah enjoyed supernatural favor. In the presence of the king. The king that he was serving. Saw him one morning. That he was sad. And the king asked him. What is the problem? Why are you sad? And he told him about the gates of the cities of his father. That the gates have been burnt down. The walls of Jerusalem are broken down. We need resources. We need... And then God granted Nehemiah favor in the sight of that king. He did not only give him permission to go down to Jerusalem to go and build the wall of Jerusalem and restore the gate, he released every material needed. 
Are you hearing me now? You will have favor in the sight of men of means. How many of you know the heart of a king is in the hand of God? God will open the heart of a king in your direction. Those people that God has blessed with means, that have the means. You know, when somebody, when so, you know, do you know that some people, they can talk about, um, they can talk about 100 million as if you are talking about 10 naira. How many of you know what I'm talking about? That if they say 100 million now, I know some people that will just fall down and die. Because his brain will burst. You got 100 million? Ah, he will die, yo. I know some people like that. But for some people, he's just like when you're talking about 10 naira. Are you with me now? He's just like you're talking about 10 naira. When you're saying, ah, they say, how much, how much will be the cost? You say, ah, Ezra, it's very expensive. He say, how much? He say, ah, it's expensive. You are even afraid to talk about the cost. Because to you, it's very heavy. But the man say, how much? He say, ah, Ezra, it will cost 10 million, no? 10 million? And then the man say, is, is that okay? Is that all? Is that all? He say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He say, okay. Bring me that drawer. And he issue a check of 20 million. And get, will that be okay? How many of you want that kind of miracle? That you will have more than enough. I'm asking a question under the anointing. Some of you are not raising. I say, how many of you want that kind of miracle? Oh, but where is it? I know that shame me. I know that shame me. No, look, me loan sorrow. Money, how many of you want that kind of I'm not here to excite you. I'm not a comedian. I'm doing what God says I should do. Are you hearing me now? I'm speaking the words he put into my mind. I say, how many of you want that kind of miracle? It will be unto you according to your faith. In the name of Jesus. When, it, when the force of favor is at work, the cost means nothing. Write it down in capital letter. When the force of favor is at work, the cost means what? Nothing. You are thinking about the cost. We are talking about the force of favor. When the anointing for favor rests upon you, it does not matter how much is it. And I want you to learn to work with God. Because he is the one that can release favor upon you. That when they begin to see you, they begin to favor you. They begin to favor you. There are people that may not be able to give you one naira. But they can connect you with businesses that can give you millions. Oh yes, there are people like that. They will not be able to give you one naira. But they can give you a note to so and so and recommend you to go and meet so and so. And what you will get there will be millions. We are talking of favor. Are you hearing me now? As from today, you come under that force of favor. When they see you, they want The next time you make that proposal, it will be wrapped in divine favor. In the name of Jesus, favor upon your life, favor upon your work, favor upon you, Favor is a fragrance in the spirit. Ah, I pray for you today. You will smell well in the spirit. The aroma of favor, the fragrance of favor will come upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Men that used to see you before and begin to hate you and run away from you, as from today, they will begin to look for you. Anyone here under the attack of disfavor, I take authority over that attack. I want to 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 any bad recommendation. Loju I want to yekora elowo. From today, the hand of God will be heavy upon their lives. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against in judgment, I condemn them. 
in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you by that one best if you turn she. In the name of Jesus. They, they, when you are not there, people will speak well about you. They will recommend you for people that will help you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Favor. Do you know Esther got that favor? Esther got that. Only God knows how many, how many ladies entered into the race wanting to become the next queen. Many of them come from rich home. Many of them come from billionaire's family. I can imagine. Can you imagine? Can you hear me? I can imagine. The most powerful man that time that was ruler of 127 nations from, 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 from India to Ethiopia. Go and check the Bible in the book of Esther. The king was ruling over 127 nations. It was about the most powerful man that time. He was looking for a wife. And uh, many people bought from. Many people came. Many people came. And those that entered the race, they will be decorating you, giving you perfume, fragrance, and all that. At least for about six months before you can come to the presence of the king. They would have been preparing you with many cosmetics, many oil, many, fra many fragrance, many ointment, many perfume, many washing, different pedicure and manicure, just because you want to appear before the king for one night. Just one night. But favor single out Esther. Esther had no wealthy background. The father died, the mother died. Who told you that your father and mother are dead and that that's the end of your life? The Lord is rising for you. Oh, I say the Lord is rising for you. I say the Lord is rising for you. When Esther showed up, the king pointed at her. And the contest is ended. Because the queen is here. Did you hear what I say? I don't know, maybe Esther was the first person to, show, to come in. But the Bible didn't tell us she was the last person. But I know, wh wh whichever number she is, that ends the game. When she showed up, the king said, oh yeah, this is what I'm looking for. And then the contest ended. The queen is here. All the other people that have not showed up, they went back to their house. Force of favor. Favor will make you to be highly preferred. Favor will make you to be highly preferred. Ah! Favor will make you to be highly preferred. Those that are speaking against you, that didn't like you, that are talking against you, when you show up, they will change their words. They will change their words. They will change their words. Because something is showing up with you. You know? I've walked in that grace, and I'm walking in that grace. It doesn't matter those who doesn't like. Once I show up, I wouldn't speak too. I wouldn't speak for two minutes. They'll change their mind. They'll change their mind because there is an anointing of favor. There is. A, it takes a demon to hate me. It takes a what? A demon. So I've, I, I won't feel so if, if anybody that hates me has a demon, he himself may not know. But I tell you today. That the anointing of favor is coming upon you. When they see you, they will love you. When they see you, they want to hear you. In the name of Jesus. You need favor to sell your market. How many of you know? You need favor to sell. All these uh, marketing strategies sometimes may not even work. Oh. <laughs> you need favor strategy. You need favor what? Strategy. You need favor. I'm telling you. You need favor. Is an anointing for favor. Daniel has favor. Moses has favor. You, I'm telling you, the factor of favor in financial and material miracles is orchestrated by Jehovah Jireh. And finally, somebody say finally. How does Jehovah Jireh perform material and financial miracle for his people? Can you remember where we are coming from? What's number one? In the form of debt cancellation. 
What's number two? In the form of the supernatural release of your money or material tied down by the enemy. Some of us, we have to go into spiritual warfare to release our money. Number three, in the form of supernatural supply. Number four, in the form of men coming under divine mandate to do things for you. And it is always on the platform of honor. You are not the one asking for it. It's God telling them to do it for you. And then number five, in the form of supernatural release of favor. And this is number six. We'll continue next week for the remaining six. In the form of supernatural magnification of your efforts. Supernatural magnification of your effort. Supernatural magnification of your effort. That's how Jehovah Jireh works. You will make effort. Jehovah Jireh will magnify that effort supernaturally. The effort that is small in your sight, Jehovah Jireh will magnify it. It will bring results that is much, much more than your effort. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you have heard that? It's a miracle of Jehovah Jireh. Oh yes, it's a miracle of Jehovah Jireh. You will walk. You will put in effort. But Jehovah Jireh will do what? Will magnify it. It will be big. It will attract much more result. That is Jehovah Jireh. You won't be lazy, but it will magnify your effort. Oh yes, it will magnify your effort. It will magnify your effort. Now, this one, I'm going to read it. I want every one of us, open your Bible. Second Kings, chapter 7. I will read from verse 3. Second Kings, chapter 7. Second Kings, chapter 7. Oh, it's a very familiar story. But there is something the Holy Spirit is showing me. You remember when Samaria was under siege? You remember? And they were killing their children. And uh, you remember the king, when he heard that two women were arguing over which child to kill the next day. Are you hearing me now? The king said they should go and cut off the head of Elisha. As if Elisha is the cause of the problem. And then Elisha came out by the word of the Lord and he said, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. And you remember the economic advisor a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God. You remember? And said, behold, if the Lord will make windows of heaven, will this thing happen? And Elijah said, you will see it oh, with your eyes. <laughs> but you will not eat thereof. Look up, everybody. Look up. First, look up. Would you ever think that God will be contemplating using lepers to bring about the manifestation of that gigantic prophecy. Hello? Hello? Do you, can you imagine the magnitude of the famine that they were killing their children? Now, it's not up to that in Nigeria. And God will not let it get to that level. So which means, the current situation in Nigeria is still far better than that. And when the prophet will speak, he didn't say by this time next year. What did he say? By this time tomorrow. 24 hours miracle. Somebody is about to enter into that experience. It doesn't take God. It doesn't take God 
a whole year to transform your life. In 24 hours, God turned around the faith, the situation of Samaria. In 24 hours. Somebody say in 24 hours. Ah! 24 hours is too long for God. To transform your life. That the people that saw you in the morning, when they see you again in the evening, they will be arguing about you. It's not him. No, it's not him. Somebody is stepping into that experience. That your matter, people will begin to argue about you. For good. Now he said, this time to And he said what God will do. If you want to think as a human being, what kind of people will you think God will use to manifest that prophecy? Hello? People like Dangote. Ah, it's because they have money. Multi-millionaire, billionaires and all that. But as, as heavy as the prophecy was, as serious as the problem was, God chose lepers. What did I say? <laughs> what did I say? God chose what? Lepers. Look at verse 3. Let's read it. And there were four leprous men at the entry in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say, we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come. Let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall die. How many of you are still following me now? Verse 5. And they rose up in the twilight. How many of them? Talk to me. How many of them? Four of them. To go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Look up. Four leper chose to go to the camp of the Syrians. If whatever they want to do with us, let them do. Because if we say we want to go to Samaria, that's their city. Oh. Hunger will kill us there. If we stay here, we will still die. Let's go to the camp of our tormentors. If they save us, fine. If they don't save us, fine. Let's go. And very early in the morning, four of them went into the camp of the Syrian. And by the time they get to a particular end, they walk. They discover that there was nobody there. Why? Which verse am I reading now? Verse 6. For who now? For the Lord had made host of the Syrians to do what? To hear <laughs> a noise of chariot and a noise of horses. Even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, ah, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore, they arose and fled. When? 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 In the twilight. When did the four lepers enter the camp? In the twilight. When did the host of Syrians, the all Syrian army, when did they run away? In the same twilight. Look up. Let's connect the dot. This is what happened. Four lepers who were walking dejectedly. I can imagine a man that is not sure if he's going to die or live, how, how they will be walking. If I have time, I would have asked somebody to demonstrate it for us. Look up. 
Tan gbo eni to ni dani loju to ba rin e ri ninu irin e pe eni ma confident o but ente bi ti pa ti e bigidi ti pa to de lo ti o mo to ma sele si ba la se ma rin they be working hopelessly hopelessly tanu tanu this is how the leper were working for them listen to me listen to me somebody's condition is about to change listen listen very well as they were walking in the twilight they entered the camp of the Syrians as they were walking walking God magnified their steps God magnified their steppings they themselves cannot hear the, the sound of their stepping because it was a weak step they are hungry people weak people and they are leper sick but God magnified it in the ears of the Syrians army he was like a host of army like a host of army as they were stepping it was like a host of army it was like the noise of chariot it was like the noise of ah God magnified their steppings God is about to do that for somebody here that you will speak in Akure, the nations will hear your voice. God magnified their steppings. God magnified their steppings. It was like the whole nation. They said the king of the king of Samaria had ordered people, hired fighters, hired his Edeitites and the Egyptians to come and deal with us. They were so much afraid that they left their horses. They ran with their legs. Which one is easier to run faster? Is it leg or horses or chariot? How can a man leave his car and use his leg to run? That is the extent of the fear. Ah! Essay in your memory, a mimi mother saw the la. One boy roi, one boy roi, kata, kata, kata. Be a one for lock boy in your. It was so fearful that they. And it's only four people that were coming. Are you hearing me now? That is magnification of your effort. That's it. Magnification. That's the work of Jehovah Jireh. Are you hearing me now? In Isheto, Sheto, Tiwago, Kasigon, Ade, so Lagbara, Loju, one. Aso, Lagbara, Leti, one. Are you hearing me now? I've gone to places that I was just preaching, ministering. You know, I've been ministering since now. Are you hearing me now? Now, the, the first time I went to Abuja to preach, I was just preaching. I won't mention the name of church. I just preached. I was just doing introduction. I've not started my message, yo. Just doing introduction, saying one or two things, and then, and then, and then the time is over. Twenty-five minutes. I finish, and they came and said, "Man of God, ah, that was powerful." Me that I was still saying, ah. Kill our survival. And they said, ah, that was powerful. Ah, man of God. It was great. Ah, man of God. A mirror answer on that moment. Mumbaton of his asolon de magnify it. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? God is taking you places. God will magnify your efforts. Just like four lepers. Threatening a whole host of the Syrians. They ran away. They left their horses. They left their chariot. They left their food. They left their money. They left everything. You know the story. And these guys walk. They were afraid at first. When they got to the end of the camp. And they saw that everywhere was quiet. Nobody. I can imagine. Hey. Hey. Who is there? Uh, nobody. Nobody. Eh? Eh? What happened? They quickly carry some food. They went and dodged it. They came back. Nobody. Uh -uh. They carry another one. <laughs> they went Nobody. Everything. And one of them said, Ah, this one is beyond us. Ah, we will not do well if we don't tell the king. Go. And that is how God used four lepers to, mag to manifest the prophecy of by this time tomorrow. Rise up on your feet. God is magnifying your effort. I say God is magnifying your effort. In what that yoke is broken today. I take authority over that assault of the enemy. 
that assault is shattered today. I can't hear your amen. amen. Supernatural magnification of your efforts. That paper you have written will receive international attention. That proposal will receive international attention. They will release the fund required to do the work. Ah, somebody is getting an aid. How many of you understand what I say now? Aid. Aid. Help. Help. Financial aid. To do your work. To do your project. To complete your course. Financial aid. Masters abroad. All expenses paid. Full scholarship. PhD abroad. All expenses paid. Full scholarship. Somebody is receiving an aid. Supernatural magnification of your effort. 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 No matter how small or insignificant your effort appears, supernatural magnification is coming. The miracle of divine magnification of human effort. In the name of Jesus, what is small will become big. What is little will become much. In the name of Jesus, Jehovah Jireh will take over your work. Jehovah Jireh will magnify your effort, magnify your effort, magnify your effort. You will do it, you will see the reward. You will do it, you will see the reward. You will do it, you will see the reward. In the name of Jesus. All this dimension of Jehovah Jireh bringing material and financial miracle to his people begin to walk in the reality of them all. Begin to walk in the reality of them all. Your debt is cancelled. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your money and material hanging anywhere is here by release. Any to get here, all she in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, supernatural supply, supernatural supply, supernatural supply. From now on, from now on, men and women will come under the mandate to do things for you. Men and women will come under the mandate to do things for you. Ah, men and women will come under the mandate to do things for you, to do things for you, to do things for you, to do things for you. Things for you. I stand on the altar of the anointing today and I pray that from today by the mercy of God men and women will come under the mandate to do something for you in the name of Jesus this is that season this is that season your struggle is over I break the yoke of struggle I break the yoke of struggle I break the yoke of empty toilet Every toiling that has not yielded anything. Today, the story has changed. The Lord will bless your effort. The Lord will bless your work. The Lord will remember you for good. You come under the anointing of favor. Anything that is yours, they will want to have it. Anything that is yours, they will be positively disposed to it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. How many of you receive that? That is your portion today. That is your portion forever. 
It is well with you. Tell somebody it is done. Oh yes, it is done. Oh yes, it is done. Oh yes, it is done. It is done. 